I think the first thing I'll say is that while it's tempting to characterize voting rights in this country as a kind of linear progression, you know, things were bad, but they got better, right? There's a classic narrative of it used to be that only property owning white owning whites could vote now, with the exception of folks with criminal convictions, which, by the way, can be a pretty large exception, young people, non citizen, um, and the mentally incompetent, most people have the right to vote. And so I think the conventional story we tell is, you know, that it used to be very restrictive, now it's very expansive, and we've kind of made this progression. Um, but I think the story of voting rights in this country is sort of better characterized as a series of expansions and contractions, as opposed to as the sort of linear progress where things only seem to get better. Thank you, Brooke, and, and thank you, Emily, for your presentation. Um, I am the president and general counsel of MALDA, which is the Mexican American Legal Defense and Educational Fund. And we are a now 52 year old national legal organization whose mission is to promote the civil rights of all Latinos living in the United States. Among our work is a focus on voting rights. So we do litigate cases around the country about people's access to the ballot, about people's ability to ensure that their ballots are counted, and about other election structures that may restrict the right to vote. And that's what I'll be talking about. How are folks engaging in activities that would suppress or limit the right to vote. 